Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. In this session, we are going to discuss about national income. So what comes into your mind when I say national income? That means when I add the all incomes of all the persons in a country, it may add up to national income. So we shall see what is actual national income in this topic. So what do you mean by national income? So national income is nothing but it is the total value that is money value of all final goods and services produced in a country during a financial year. Financial year means from 1st April to 31st March of next year. So that means when I add all the money values of all final goods, what do you mean final goods? There are two types of goods. One is final good and the other is intermediate good. So what do you mean by final good? Final good means which is ready for use by the consumer. There is no further production on it. Intermediate good means which undergoes manufacturing process and it is not ready for use. Okay. So can I call a marker as final good? Yes, because it is ready for use. So like that when I add the money value of all final goods and services produced in a country, I will get national income in the country for a period of financial year so national income of a country indicates the progress of the country if it is the if there is increase in the national income if there is decrease there is called deceleration or lesser growth in the country okay moving on to the sources from which the income is generated first we need to know before i calculate national income we need to know from which sources the income is generated in the country. So there are three types of sources from which the income is generated. So first is primary sector, next is secondary sector and third is tertiary sector. So what do you mean by primary? Primary means first. That means these people touch the raw material first. Who are those people? Agriculture and its allied activities. What do you mean by agriculture? Agriculture is a science of cultivation of soil. And allied activities means related to agriculture like animal husbandry, like poultry, fishing, all these. Okay? Dairy, all these come under allied activities of agriculture. Mining also comes under primary sector because they touch the raw material first. Okay? So that's why they come under the primary sector. Moving on to the secondary sector. The raw material from the primary sector is sent to secondary sector for processing in the industries. Suppose I want to make bread. Wheat is given by the farmer and it is made into bread by the baking industry in the secondary sector. Then what does tertiary sector do? They cater or provide services to both primary and secondary sectors. Okay, clear with this? So like IT, banking, transportation, medical, tourism, all these are services. They provide services to both primary and secondary sectors. Okay. So these are the three sectors which generate income in any in nation. Okay. What does father of economics say? Who is father of economics? Adam Smith. So he says economics is nothing but how they gain wealth and how they lose wealth. Okay, that is all economics. So what he has written in the book called An Enquiry into the Nature of Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nations in the year 1733. Okay, in 1770s. Clear with this? So these are the three sectors in which through which the income is generated in different sectors. Moving on to the methods how the national income is calculated. There are three methods to calculate national income. So first is income method, next is expenditure method and next is product or value added method. So what do you mean by income method? As I say, name says income. So when I add all incomes in the country, so that gives national income in the country. But I need to know from which sources the income is generated. So it is generated from four factors of production. What are those four factors of production? Land, labor, capital and management so from land we get rent that is an income from the this factor of production from labor we get wages or salaries from capital we get profits from management sorry from capital we get interest from management we get profits so these are the four factor incomes 
under which any person is categorized tell me any person who goes out of this category i am working from for some organization i am doing my labor force i would get my salary suppose there is a uh, person who, who wants to buy a land okay he will buy from another person he it generates income and he may give it rent for another person okay he may start a company there there he will get profits he may give loan to some other person he may get interest on that so all the persons in any country are categorized into these four categories only so when i add all these incomes all these factor incomes that gives my national income of the country so this is the income method which is mostly used in india okay next moving on to the expenditure method so what is income is equal to income is equal to expenditures plus savings so when i assume savings as zero so income is equal to expenditures that means if i calculate expenditure that is income so adding all expenditures gives nash income assuming savings as zero so what are the types of expenditures we have the first is investment expenditure what is investment expenditure to make a product the manufacturer makes investment expenditure or manufacturing expenditure and to buy that product the person the consumer has to make consumption expenditure are there only two or any other expenditures we have one more that is government expenditure suppose i want to eat bread okay so to make that bread the manufacturer makes manufacturing expenditure to buy that bread i make consumption expenditure but to transport that bread i need roads the government also spend some money to lay those roads so that is called government expenditure so these are the three types of expenditures we have for any product so when i add all these expenditures that gives national income of a country okay so moving on to how do we calculate generally you can see from the diagram the government expenditure the investment expenditure and the consumption expenditure and also we add the x minus m x stands for exports and m stands for imports so when i add all these expenditures let net exports that is when i am subtracting imports from exports that is called net exports that is x minus m i will get nash income under expenditure method this is the expenditure method c plus i plus g plus x minus m gives a nash income under expenditure method moving on to the next method that is product or value added method so what do you mean by value addition we have one tax called value added tax so if you know this we can know how the value added tax is levied so first what is value added method for all the value addition done when i add all these value additions it gives nash income of the country what do you mean by value addition we will see with a small example suppose a farmer has made a product that is called wheat of worth rupees 100 rupees okay and baker taking this 100 rupees wheat he has made 300 rupees of bread then what is the value addition done by baker here 300 minus 100 that is the value addition of baker what is the value addition of farmer 100 rupees so when i add both these value addition i'll get 100 plus 200 that is 300 rupees so here the nash income is 300 rupees so like that if i add all the value addition for all the products in the country i will get nash income under value addition method in india most used methods are income method and value added method clear with this three methods so moving on to the next one that is gdp gross domestic product so what do you mean by gdp so gross domestic product has the same definition of national income it is a final value of all goods and services produced in the country during a financial year and what is the difference between national income and gdp see national domestic suppose i take an example called domestic airlines and international airlines domestic airlines will fly within the country only international airlines will fly outside the country so when i say domestic means i am not including foreign trade so when i say national means i will include foreign trade 
तो दैट इज अ मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन जीडीपी एंड नेशनल इनकम ओके सो सेम डे देर आर दे आर हैविंग सेम डेफिनेशन बट आई डोंट इंक्लूड फॉरेन ट्रेड इन जीडीपी बट आई इंक्लूड इन नेशनल इनकम मूविंग ऑन द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन दैट जीडीपी दैट इज जीडीपी डिफ्लेटर इट इज इक्वल टू नॉमिनल जीडीपी बाय रियल जीडीपी इनटू हंड्रेड व्हाट इज दिस नॉमिनल जीडीपी नॉमिनल जीडीपी इज वन व्हिच टेक्स द प्राइसेस ऑफ द करंट ईयर इन इज द प्रेजेंट प्राइसेस एंड रियल जीडीपी टेक्स इनटू द अकाउंट ऑफ द प्राइसेस ऑफ बेस ईयर इन व्हिच द प्राइसेस आर कांस्टेंट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट मंथ टू द लास्ट मंथ so when i compare them i will get gdp deflator in percentages okay moving on to the next one the calculation of various terms so now we have seen we have added the final value of all goods and services i got gdp now i want to calculate other terms the first is gross national product that is gnp i have told you what is the difference between domestic and national i include foreign trade in national so gdp plus x minus m is equal to gnp gross national product what is x stands for exports m stands for imports i am subtracting imports from exports that means exports are more than imports can i call it x minus m as net income from abroad yes nifa why because when exports are more it is income from abroad can i call it as net exports yes because i am subtracting something from exports suppose you have gross salary net salary which salary you will take to home this is net salary after some cuttings so here also i have cut something from exports that's why it is called net exports okay and the next term is net domestic product net means we have to subtract some cuttings so here i am subtracting depreciation so net domestic product ndp is equals to gdp minus depreciation depreciation means some cuttings some wear and tear in the process okay and next one is net national product now i want to calculate net national product so gdp plus national means x minus m net means minus depreciation so gdp plus x minus m minus depreciation can i write it gnp minus depreciation yes can i write it ndp plus x minus m yes is net national product so in india x minus m is net income from abroad and also net exports so sometimes in questions they may give instead of x minus m they may give nifa or net exports so don't get confused all are same okay they'll directly give the formulas in the option if you know the difference between ne uh, national domestic gross net okay you can easily write the formulas okay moving on to other terms like factor cost what do you mean by factor cost fc so factor cost means it is also called as factory cost that is the cost incurred by the manufacturer to make that product okay then market price mp then what is this market price the price which is available to the consumer is it more than factor cost or less than factor cost it will be more than the factor cost because i'll add some things after it comes out into the market what are those i'm adding indirect taxes why indirect taxes why not direct taxes direct taxes are those which are levied on the consumer indirect taxes are levied on the products consumed by the person that is excise duty customs duty all these service taxes they are levied on the products consumed by the person then why i am removing subsidies suppose a, a price of a product is costing 100 105 rupees now the government has given 5 rupees subsidy now i am removing it so the price of the product available in the market is 100 rupees only so market price is equals to factor cost plus indirect taxes minus subsidies okay in india gdp is means gdp at factor cost not at market price okay we are calculating gdp only at factor cost and national income means nnp at factor cost net national product at factor cost okay moving on to the next one india's economic scenario so what are the india's economic scenario we shall see now so what is the value of gdp of india for 2016 
2.2 trillion US dollars. What is how much is trillion? Trillion is thousand billion. How much is billion? Thousand million. How much is million? Ten lakhs. Okay. And if you take in terms of percentages, it is 7.1 percentage for 2016. Okay. Next, if I take national income, it is 149.94 lakh crores for the financial year 2016-17. Okay. Then what is per capita income? Per capita income means per person income. How will I get per person income? If I divide national income with total population, I will get per capita income. How much is it? 1 lakh 3,219 rupees. For 2016-17 this is the India's economic scenario coming to world economic scenario okay USA has around 18.5 trillion US dollars this is the largest GDP in the world and China has the second place with 11.2 trillion US dollars and India has seventh place with 2.2 trillion US dollars okay as for 2016 and moving on to the contribution of different sectors to India's GDP. We need to know how, which sector contributes higher, which sector contributes lower. So what are the three sectors we have? Primary, secondary and tertiary sectors. So which is the largest con contributing sector? That is tertiary sector, that is services sector. It is contributing 54% and secondary sector is contributing 29% and primary sector that is agriculture is contributing very less that is 17 percentage this was opposite in 1950s but now it is like this okay this is all for this session we'll meet in the next session thank you